Hello, my name is Matthew Perrins and I'm going to give you a demonstration of how to create a mobile application within Bluemix and then how to integrate that mobile application with a Bluemix backend that consists of using Cloudant and the object storage services and integrating those with API Connect. So when you first arrive into the new Bluemix experience you'll see it's broken into logical areas so I'm going to navigate into the mobile area and here I'll be presented with my working projects for the space that I'm connected to. So at the moment I'm connected to the commerce space and I'm logged in to US South as Matthew Perrins. So I'm going to um, create a new project called, um, which is a, a catalog project. So it allows me to uh, start from a position of a shopping example where I can navigate into a product and then look to purchase it. So you see when you come into creating a new project you can navigate through a number of different starting templates. You can quite easily start with an empty template and build it up yourself or you could take a template that already exists. So I'm going to take the store catalog example and I'm going to create something called the IBM shop. Once I've created this project, it will take me into the uh, designer, which will allow me to modify and customize that starting point and integrate it with data and enable it for push and authentication. So you, you start to come into the designer screen. You'll see that um, you can support a number of different screen types. So you can easily create a menu and a menu can connect to a list and the list can connect to um, data screens and more detailed views. Um, from here we could also do some customization of the layout of the content so we could choose a different style of, uh, of initial menu whether it be list, list with icon or just big button list. We can then associate different list views to each icon click so we can click on jackets it will take me into the jackets view and then within the jackets view I could collect, select a data source and we've already got it connected to the products and then again I can change the style of how I want that view to look um, so it's quite customizable and then more importantly I can change the fields of data that I'd like to bind into that that layout and look and feel so then we'll look at well how do we navigate to data so we'll see that that screen is has a more detailed screen which has a picture and then has a price and has a description. If we then go look at data, we can see the actual data that's set up for, for us to work with called the products database. And it was originally created as a, a cloud and backend, but we could quite easily use it with Google Sheets or uh, a simple Excel spreadsheet if you're doing a rapid application prototype. We can go in and then enable capabilities like we can put uh, a sign-on screen into the app and, and add some simple user authentication. We could go in and configure the settings so we could change the overall icon or the name of the app and then we could um, go in and enable things like the push service so we could support being able to receive push notifications. When you've actually finished preparing your application you can then specify the two platforms we support at the moment which are iOS and Android and then we can trigger uh, getting off some code. Um, so this will now generate its native code for iOS and native code for Android. And while that's doing that in the background, I want to talk to you about how we can um, how we can now configure the back end that would work with it. So we have a, low, a whole range of public Git repos that are out on GitHub that we can use with lots of different sample code in it and lots of snippets that you can use to start building your app. But one of the key samples we put together is something called the mobile dashboard um, store catalog backend. So this is a backend, a reference application that we see being key to you being able to create a mobile application. So firstly it's um, uh, a Cloud Foundry app built on Node and it uses the API Connect framework strong loop or loopback adapters to allow us to do an API integration. And it allows us to do an API integration into cloud and, and object storage. And we've also integrated it with authentication with the mobile client access. Um, in the future, we'll be extending it to demonstrate how you can trigger push notifications 
and how you can um, collect and view mobile analytics but these services are provisioned for you so what we've done is we've created a very simple tool called the Bluemix generator that will actually create you uh, a fully working back end ready for you um, to work with so let's take a clone of this project and let's go into our command line and let's git clone that to my desktop so if we go back to Bluemix we'll see that we've now finished the iOS download uh, code generation and I can click source code and that will now download me the source code which we'll come back to later um, we'll come back and I'll show you a little bit later what um, Android does but it allows you to uh, present a QR code which you can scan on your Android device and it will automatically download the running app uh, to your machine. So if I now nip, nip over to the full blue mix and I go into all items you can see that I do not have any provision services within my space on blue mix at this point. So now that I've cloned the project I would like to go into that code and I'm going to run the BlueGen tool which I've previously installed. And you see now it's telling me that I can create a store catalog backend for Bluemix. It's got a runtime based on Node using the API Connect loopback and it will provision for me a number of different services. So at this point I am going to log in and I'm going to pick a, a region that I'd like to do my deployment to. So I'd like to do it to south. I'd like to deploy it into my personal space and I'm going to deploy it into the commerce space that we're working with and I'm going to give it uh, IBM shop demo. I'm going to come and pre show you an, uh, an existing one that we built earlier just to, to speed up the, the demo sequence. So what this is doing now is under the covers this is now provisioning a cloud and database and it is populating it with data. So again, if we just refresh that, you'll see that we will have uh, a cloud and database provisioned with IBM Shop Demo. It's now asking me to provision object storage. And again, this will provision for me object storage and it will populate it with the images that we're going to use within our shopping example. So when we've got a product, it will show us a product image. And you see it's loading up ties and shirts and trouser information and you see there that it's automatically updated the instance that we've seen created it will go and provision me a mobile client access and a push notification and once this is completed you see very simple steps no complicated read new files it has now finished provision provisioning for me a number of different Bluemix services ready for me to bind to so you now see I've got push analytics so if I go into the Cloudant example and I go in and look at the Cloudant database, you'll see the database has been automatically provisioned for me and it's been pre-populated with data. So I can see I'm going to the products and you'll see now that I have a product schema that I can reference uh, and use. Now, what we're showing here is that we're using API Connect as, as our integration point. So I'm not going to go into a detailed demo of how that works, but I'll show you the REST interfaces that this creates in a minute. So if I now connect and log into Bluemix using the command line tools, um, I can now do a CF push at this stage, and this will start, uh, sorry, I have to log into the, the project so I need to navigate to the project so it's created me a, a project directory which has uh, a running manifest.yaml and a package.json and at this point I can trigger a CF push and this will now go and prepare and deploy a fully running APIC based application that is bound to these instances and we'll come back and look at that in a second um, as it's finishing it. So if we now go and so you see now that it's uh, deploying and preparing uh, my environment. So if I now go into compute 
uh, we can see now that the IBM shop instance is, is being prepared. If we go into that, we'll see that it's now bound it to IBM shop demo, IBM shop storage and IBM push. So that just shows you how easy it is to deploy a reasonably straightforward and uh, integrated backend. Um, but what we had previously was we had our, our source code that we downloaded um, called IBM shop. So what I've done is I've, um, what I can do is navigate to a space where I've provisioned this previously. I go to dev. And you see I've created the IBM shop and the IBM shop is previously deployed with an IBM shop data, all the things that you saw me demoing later. Um, and if I now go and view this app, this will take me to a fully working copy of this app and I can navigate into the uh, API reference and you can see here, here's all the products, so all the APIs that I can use. I can go into the products and if I try that out using the Swagger interface, you'll see now it's returned all that data and this whole API was built using API Connect. Now if I want to um, for instance, just check I've got the images correctly deployed. So let's take these corporate trousers. So if I take that image there and I go down to the product image API and I type the container is closed and the image is there. I can test that I can retrieve the corporate trousers uh, image. So I've, pro I've provisioned a back end and I've, um, uh, I've now tested my back end I've downloaded I've created my front end so now what I want to do is make the two work together so what I've done is opened up the IBM shop into um, my application and I've added a couple of extra uh, integration points which we have detailed article giving you uh, information on how to do that and you see that we're mapping it to Bluemix and we're mapping it to the app grid for this application so if I now run this app in iOS you'll see now I can see my this is a native app written um, written for iOS I can now navigate into jackets and you see that it's retrieved a list of jackets back and if I go into the jacket you'll see it's retrieved the jacket image and it's given the more detailed information back so what you're seeing here is how straightforward it is now with Bluemix to one to be able to design and create a, a mobile client using the advanced mobile designing tools and two using the BlueGen starter project it's it's very straightforward to build a back end that will meet the kind of functional requirements you need with a rest abstracted interface bound into uh, the back end points that you, you're working with so if we now at this point go back to the ZF push we deployed earlier, you'll see that this is the instance that we've just created. And if I go back and pull that in here, you'll see that that is a fully running instance that I was able to create and deploy in just a matter of minutes using the back end tool. And you've seen that I've demonstrated it integrated with the client end tool. So that concludes this short demonstration. And I think it gives you a clue of some of the improvements that we've made around the Bluemix platform um, and you can see the, the things that we're doing to improve the way and speed the way that developers can consume and use Bluemix for delivering world-class applications. Thank you very much.